Hi guys, we're here with our monthly reading roundup. We all read a lot in May, I think, so we are here to share just a few of our favorites with you. Away we go. My first book is The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. This one follows 12-year-old Malu as she is forced to move from Florida to Chicago with her mom when she gets a new job, having to leave behind her friends and her dad and the record shop that he owns that she has practically grown up in. Malu is half Mexican, but partly because the town she's from in Florida doesn't have a very big Latino population, and partly as re rebellion against her mom, who she jokingly refers to as super Mexican, she's not very in touch with her Mexican side. Because of her relationship with her mom, she already doesn't feel Mexican enough, and now suddenly she's living in Chicago where there's a huge Mexican population and she's surrounded by Latino culture everywhere she goes. As the story progresses though, Malu finds a way to use her two favorite things, zines and punk music, to connect to her culture and find her place in her new school and her new life. It was an awesome coming of age story and it introduced me to a ton of new music. And also there's really great zine art that Malu has made throughout the book, which I just love. So always remember that the first rule of punk is be yourself. This book comes out on August 22nd. So one book that I had a lot of fun reading this month was Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han. This is the final novel in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series and it came out at the beginning of the month and I rushed to the bookstore to pick it up and immediately read it in one or two sittings. It was so good. If you haven't heard of this series before, the first book, which is called To All the Boys I've Loved Before, is about a girl named Laura Jean who whenever she has a crush on someone, and she wants to get over it, she'll write a letter to that boy explaining why she loved them and kind of saying goodbye, and then she just seals the letters and puts them in a hat box under her bed. One day she finds out that all of the letters from under her bed were sent out, and the first book is all about her dealing with the repercussions of that event. So while this series is about Laura Jean and her relationships with different boys, my favorite thing about it is how much it focuses on her family members. This is the perfect book to read if you just want to feel happy about life. Um, I always think of it as a total comfort read, and I really enjoyed the final book in the series. So my first book is Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is a truly beautiful but heartbreaking book set in the light, late 1960s in Nigeria during the Biafran War. I found this book to be completely fascinating because I honestly didn't even know the Biafran War happened, which is a little bit shameful, but I really felt like I learned a lot about Nigeria. So this book follows three points of view, a 13-year-old boy who is a houseboy for a university professor. You also follow the university professor professor's mistress, and Richard, who is an Englishman visiting and living in Nigeria from England. Each point of view is vastly different as they have very different life experiences, but each was very interesting and gave you a different point of view of what was happening politically in the country at the time. This is the first Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie book I've ever read, and it had been on my TBR for over two years, so this is one I've had for a really long time, but it definitely has made me want to read more of her books, specifically Americana, which I think I'm going to pick up next. If you're into historical fiction, I definitely recommend you checking this out, as it definitely serves a different point of view. Next up is The Secret Sheriff of Sixth Grade by Jordan Sonnenblick. I was surprised at how heavy the subject matter was in this book for a middle grade title, but it also really made me realize that while our instinct is to shelter kids from unhappy real life things that are happening in the world, the reality is that a lot of kids are living in and amongst them. So this book follows Maverick Falconer, a sixth grader with a big name in a little body. Maverick's dad died serving in Afghanistan when he was just a kid, so it's just him and his mom together. His mom suffers from alcoholism and attracts abusive boyfriends and can't hold down a steady job. At school, he has to deal with a ton of bullying and he's the smallest kid in class, but he also has an instinct to protect other people who are being bullied. Despite how tough this subject matter is, this book manages to be really funny and heartwarming and relatable in a lot of ways. The characters are fantastic, not just Maverick, but his school principal and his other friends and his mom and his aunt. They're all just really well-developed characters. It's definitely a good study of what it means to be a hero. This book comes out on August 29th. Another book I really enjoyed this month, even though it was absolutely gut-wrenching, was The First Time She Drowned by Carrie Kletter. So this is a story about a girl named Cassie who was sent to a mental institution against her will when she was 15 years old, and the story begins when she's turned 18 and is now legally allowed to leave the institution. The story follows Cassie as she attempts to go to college as well as fit in with the outside world again. I've read a lot of books that take place within mental institutions, but this is the first story I've read that follows someone's journey after they've left an institution. This is definitely one of the most beautifully written books I've ever read, but it's also very hard-hitting. It deals with subject matter like suicide, abuse, and mental illness, 
but if you are okay with reading about topics like that, then I definitely recommend picking it up. Next up, I have Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. Michael J. Sullivan was actually originally an indie author hit and before he was picked up by a publisher. So this is actually the bind up of his first two novels, The Crown Conspiracy and Evan Partha. As you can see, this book is pretty chunky, but every single page is full of so much action and the characters in here are perfect. Our two main characters in this book are named Royce and Hadrian, and they are a tag team duo that, duo that are basically mercenaries for hire. Hadrian is a tall, brawny, funny, sassy, lovable character, character, and um, Royce is very small and surly and moody and always wears black and has a hood up, and they just make a perfect combination. If you want to get more into high fantasy, the writing in here is very accessible, and I think it would be a great place to start. Um, I had just so much fun reading this, and actually, this is my re- I actually reread this this year, so this is my second time reading it, and it was just as good. I definitely recommend picking up Theft of Swords. Next is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I haven't read this book in 15 years, but I started watching the new show that came out and then stopped and thought I should reread the book first. So this is a dystopian sci-fi book that takes place in the not too distant future, but it all just feels uh, unsettlingly realistic to me. So the story all takes place through the eyes of Offred. That is not her real name, but her real name is now Forbidden. Her role in the new social order is a handmaid, which basically means her role in life and in society is now to produce babies for the commanders and their wives and the upper class. The society is extremely rigid and everything is very closely monitored, including talking to one another. So there is very little dialogue in this book. Because it's so dangerous to talk to one another, instead the writing focuses on what is happening inside of Offred's brain. The writing in this book is just stunning. It's been a long time since I've read a book where I've had to like put it down and absorb passages and reread and just really think about the writing itself and not what has been said. There is definitely a reason why Margaret Atwood is considered Canadian literary royalty. I highly recommend watching the show as well, but just know that it's basically like the plot of the book has been thrown into a blender and mixed up because things are all out of order and um, things have been, been added, but the book itself is definitely the place to start. Another book I read this month and really loved was The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. This is the story of a girl named Lucy and the extremely impactful summer that she experiences before her final year of high school. The story begins right at the beginning of summer when Lucy has found out that her mother has cancer for the second time. And to make things even worse, her boyfriend has also just dumped her. So normally during every summer, Lucy and her family attend and host a Bible camp but this summer her mother wants her to do something a little bit different. And thus begins Lucy's journey as a counselor at a camp for troubled youth and children who've experienced trauma. Lucy's incredibly nervous about going to this camp, but over the course of the summer, she builds relationships she never would have thought possible. And it's just a really eye-opening and wonderful book. And finally, I have 112263 by Stephen King. I didn't bring this book to the office today because it is a giant thousand page hardcover book and I'm just not gonna hold it. I was so pleasantly surprised by how good this story was. I've been meaning to read more Stephen King for a while but aren't, I'm not into horror or gore really and I heard this was a really good one. Basically this story follows Jake who discovers he is able to travel back in time and he decides he's going to go back in time to stop the assassination of JFK. Although this book is super chunky, it's Stephen King's writing and it is amazing and I was gripped on every single page just watching Jake form a life in the past and having to forget modern technology. Jake has to make some really interesting decisions and the repercussions of what he does in the past are very interesting to see when he comes back to the present. If you're looking to pick up more Stephen King but don't like horror, I definitely recommend checking this out. Alright guys, so those were just a few of our favorite books that we read this month. Let us know what you're reading and enjoying down in the comments. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye!